Come on, Super 7. We need Tiamat. Look out! Hey guys, Jay. Welcome back to the channel. Guys, this is crazy. It's literally January, the beginning of the year, and it's usually the time to slow down for toy news. Because you know what? Christmas just came by. Everyone has pretty much, you know, spent all of their last end of the year budgets. But the toy news just never stops. And apparently Super 7 doesn't feel that way either. They've been working on some amazing projects behind the scenes. And today there's been a huge leak of one project which got me excited. And I want to give a huge thanks to several people, including Alejandro Valdez, for giving me the heads up on this. Huge, huge thanks to him. Guys... Dungeons & Dragons, the cartoon series, is coming back in a big way. The Ultimates figures, that's right everybody, 7-inch figures for the Dungeons & Dragons Ultimates cartoons is being developed by Super 7, and we got our first glimpse at it today. This is absolutely nuts. Let's take a look at which characters are going to be released in Wave 1 of these figures. According to Toy Hunters Hollow and In Pursuit of Toys, huge thanks goes out to them. I'm super excited for this. Let's have a look. Guys, I want to give a huge shout out to Alejandro Valdez for sending me this link. Oh my god, this is crazy, guys. This apparently is a leaked information from Toy Hunters Hollow. Somehow he discovered this link on Amazon. And guys, this is absolutely crazy. Check this out. According to Toy Hunters Hollow, this just popped up. And he goes on to say that In Pursuit of Toys has posted up the thing that I've been unable to talk about. He found the listing on Amazon from In Pursuit of Toys, who's another wonderful toy enthusiast. And he found these crazy links. Oh my gosh, guys, this is nuts. Let's click on this link and find it exactly what was leaked on Amazon.com for Dungeons & Dragons cartoon. This is crazy. In Pursuit of Toys has an affiliate link on Amazon, and in that link, man, he has discovered something absolutely crazy. Check it out, everybody. Wow, the Super 7 section has Dungeons & Dragons Ultimates. This is crazy, and there's a lot of, a few things I want to talk about here, because I am a huge fan of the Dungeons & Dragons cartoon from the 80s, and honestly, the offerings that were made by Hasbro, there was, well, there are a few things I'm going to talk about while we take a look at these things. Let's go ahead and examine what In Pursuit of toys found on Amazon. Holy crap, everybody. There they are. animated series line oh my gosh $55 each which of course is your standard Super 7 Ultimates cost for these figures these are of course 7 inch figures the first one of course is right here Super 7 Dungeons and Dragons Ultimates Wave 1 Hank the Ranger action figure let's take a look at this guys there he is everybody there's Hank the Ranger and look at what he's doing I can't believe this he's actually able to stretch out his entire arms and shoot off his bow or at least bring it back as far as the draw will allow he looks absolutely stunning oh my gosh literally like he came off of the cartoon screen look at that positioning it literally they've really made it a point <laughs> to showcase that hank can actually pull back his bowstring and create this magical effect for his bow and arrow this is awesome oh my gosh guys Here's the thing that we need to talk about. This is something we got to address the elephant in the room. The reality is that so many people have come to the conclusion that the Hasbro versions that were released a year and a half ago or whatever it was, they just couldn't do the things that you wanted them to do as an action figure. They couldn't actually, you know, draw the bow all the way back like it's being illustrated here with the Super 7 action figure. As you can see here with Hank, he just can't, no matter what I do, uh, this is the best... And you have to do it at just the right angle to make it at least appear like he's holding on to his bow. That's the best you can do, pretty much. That's it. But if you move it over, he is like, that's not the way, uh, you know, a marksman actually holds his bow. That's just crazy. And that's something that was very disappointing for many of us. I mean, that was the whole thing. That was what they did. And now seeing it here with Hank, this is going to be awesome. And of course, the versions that we got from... Hasbro were more of a 
four or five inch action, so, you know, four or five inch figures, which were fine. You know what I mean? They were okay, but they were a little bit on the shorter side. Having these as seven inch action figures is absolutely amazing. And it really does lend itself well to a collectible of this nature. I'm loving this idea. Hank comes with everything that you see here. He comes with three swappable heads. This is the way Hank was supposed to look. And another wonderful thing that they're adding into the collection as the Hasbro versions did not have much in the way of play features. They just had a bow and arrow, maybe one accessory and maybe a couple of swappable hands. At the very least here, we're getting three swappable heads. We get the stoic head, which is pretty, you know, standard. He's, he's still got a bit of a smile, Hank. He, we got his really... Uh, happy face, which is awesome. He's got this huge grin on his face. And then, of course, we have his drawing back of his bow, uh, you know, using one eye to really aim and figure out exactly where he's going to hit his target. Amazing. Hank looks incredible here. He's got his tunic with all those rivets on them. He's It's got that green motif with the slightly taupe uh, green aspect on the actual tunic itself. That brown belt with that huge buckle. And, you know, moving down, he's got those crazy boots. I love it. And he comes with additional sets of swap hands, two fists, two gripping hands, a drawstring hand that's beautiful, and two splayed hands. This is amazing. And, of course, he comes with this incredible bow that has its activated energy effect. I am curious, though, if you're able to detach this, which I think you probably are able to do so, because this definitely wouldn't look good if it's always attached to the bow as it is. I'm, I'm pretty sure that this is just the blast effect which is attached on the cross cell as we can see it here amazing the next figure of the line is one of my personal favorites sheila that's right super 7 dungeons and dragons ultimates wave 1 sheila the thief action figure this is freaking awesome seriously i've been waiting for sheila for so long she has not come up here to canada let's take a closer look at what sheila comes with there's no price on this version of sheila which is unfortunate but we do know that hank at least is priced at 55 dollars so it's probably going to be either the same price or maybe even possibly lower. Here it is. This is Sheila and this is amazing. She actually is gripping her hood, which is one of the biggest features of Sheila in the cartoon. The fact that when she put her hood on, she would actually disappear. And that's something that was really missing from the Dungeons and Dragons Hasbro set. Now you could position her hands in such a way in the Hasbro edition that it would actually look like she was moving her, he her hood over her head but this version here makes it 100 clear that she actually is gripping her hood i love it this is amazing sheila comes with everything that you see here and it's interesting they're not showing the hood gripping feature i'm wondering now zooming in closer if this is actually soft hoods and that is awesome if it is unfortunately on the actual cross cell itself there's no indication of what is soft goods and what is not that's something we're gonna have to take a let's take a look at the listing and see if there's anything Unfortunately, no, the listing doesn't really have... No, here we go. Premium paint details comes with an array of interchangeable hands, heads, as well as a soft goods cloak of invisibility and net accessory. That's awesome. So that is confirmed. This is a soft goods cloak. You can actually put the hood over her head using the two hands, which look like they're little pinching hands, to actually get this wonderful effect. That is awesome. And she comes with this net, which was another feature in the series uh, in several of the episodes. And this one apparently is also soft goods in Freaking Incredible. She also comes with a set of heads, and these are great. Again, did not get any of these in the Hasbro edition. Here we have her with a more stoic face, kind of like, you know, a, a, her standard look, if you will. She has a bit of a cheeky smile here on the left, and she has a wonderfully surprised expression, obviously when she gets captured inside of the net. That's awesome. She also comes with a host of swappable hands, including a couple of fists, a splayed hand, which kind of looks like a casting hand. I don't know why she would have one of those. She has a slightly gripping hand, which can, can be used for grabbing stuff, I suppose. And she's got those two pinching hands, which is going to be awesome to get that look where she grabs her cloak and puts it over her head. Absolutely incredible can't wait until we get sheila into the collection the next set of figures kind of surprised me to be honest with you and i think it's a good move but at the same time it might be a bit of a question mark in terms of like the overall first wave these are avengers shadow warriors now these guys would always be looming in the background or somewhere close to avenger at the time he would usually send these guys out as scouts or perhaps use them to detain or delay the adventurers as they're trying to get home in the world of Dungeons and Dragons. Let's take a closer look at these guys. Here they are as they normally are depicted in the cartoon. Just a bunch of shadowy figures which Venger uses to 
keep an eye on the adventurers and pretty much give them more or less a uh, an annoying factor. They could definitely pack a wall up if they needed to, but for the most part, they were just used for spying. The faces that are depicted here are almost symbiote Spider-Man-like, but they do have those little painted horns, which is a little bit disappointing. I would have preferred if they actually had them sticking out a little bit, perhaps like actual sculpted features, but for now, they're just painted on. This one definitely looks like a symbiote Spider-Man, and this one looks like a more pissed off Venom type of Spider-Man, which is awesome. I love the little wings. I love the fact that they're fully articulated here on all the, the shoulder joints. The it looks like they have a mid torso twist, and that, you know, almost ghostly like apparition that comes from their legs, it's really reminiscent of the cartoon. Even their hands are sculpted with little spindly sort of appendages, you know, the fingers. They look awesome. This is the two pack as it is displayed. It doesn't look like they come with any additional heads, which is disappointing, actually. I really do appreciate the fact that they have a more stoic look and a more pissed off look. But again, the lack of sculpted horns, just mostly paint and everything else is a little bit you know, kind of disappointing. But for $50 or $55, which I hope is what they're going to be coming at because the price is actually currently unavailable, hopefully that will be revealed very, very soon because I would not want be wanting to pay anything over $55 for this two-pack, uh, unfortunately. It looks like they come with two sets of hands, which could be swapped between either of them. Actually, it's a complete four set of hands when I look at it now. We have some slightly splayed hands with maybe a pointing finger here on this hand. That's interesting. We have slightly curled fingers here, even more curled fingers on this hand. And on the other ones, these are really splayed out, sort of like wispy hands. His hands are even more sp sprayed out, but one of them is really sort of pointing in a direction. And the last one is more of a clawed version of the hand. I really like the idea that it's made of translucent plastic. You can actually see some of the translucency in the arms, but as you move down further, the paint that they're using for the detail sort of disappears into this translucent, completely, uh, clear type of idea and that's actually what pegs into these two little stands i love that idea it's really cool and really gives them that extra detail that makes them look like spirits or demons and i really like that the final figure in the line is one which i only remember from a certain episode it's been uh, quite some time since i watched the series i'm gonna have to watch it again it is Super 7 Dungeons & Dragons Ultimates Wave 1 Dekion Skeleton Warrior. This guy, I just have vague memories of him because he has that certain look of a dead, you know, undead warrior. And I do remember him from a specific cartoon, but I, I'm, I'm hard-pressed to even remember what happened in that episode. Here he is in his attack mode. He looks freaking ferocious. I really do like the way he looks. I love the, the, the gloved hand, you know, the chain mail on the skeleton himself. Especially the expression on this particular head sculpt, I love it. He's only got one eye, the other one's completely rotted away, I suppose, and he still has his helmet on with the cloak that's actually draped over his head. It's an awesome design overall and really does remind me of a sort of Black Cauldron type of look. It's not too scary, but at the same time, he's somewhat relatable. And I do think I remember that uh, he's... Started off as a bad character, but at the end, he sort of revealed a purpose. It's it the, the episode's very foggy to me. If somebody can tell me in the description below what Dekion was all about, please, I would really love to learn that again. I love his sword. It's got this somewhat golden features on the hilt and the pummel, and it's got a wrap for where he's where the handle is. And of course, it seems to be pristine, which is not what you would expect from a skeleton warrior, to be honest with you. He also comes with incredible looking scabbard. It has gold features everywhere and almost an ivory look to it. It's crazy. The bones on him look a little too clean, in my opinion. I'm hoping they're going to add some sort of wash or additional deco onto that because I think that would really help to enhance the character. He's even got, you know, this kind of segmented belt which is really neat it looks like it's also made some sort of some sort of ivory or bone that's also really interesting to look at and his shin guards and those gigantic feet i really love the way this character looks he's just awesome dekion comes with everything that you see here he comes with one swappable head which is more of a really pissed off dekion he also comes with his standard frowning face He's looking like he just woke up and he's kind of, I need my coffee kind of look, you know what I mean? It's so much fun. I love the pitting that's inside his helmet, but it's really a juxtaposition from that to the gold trim. The gold looks pristine. And there is a little bit of detail on that, which is kind of uh, a little bit on and off. There, the, that same pitting detail is on his sh single shoulder pauldron. But again, it's got that gold trim, which is a little bit strange in terms of its overall look. The bones do seem to have some sort of, of, of wash on it, which I appreciate a lot. 
it really does help to accentuate those features along with the chainmail, his overall cross guard straps and of course that segmented belt i love the i love the gloves which make him look like he died with his with you know fighting that was awesome he's got two fists a single grip hand for his sword a splayed out hand and two more relaxed hands of course his shin protectors look amazing again a little bit weird they have all this pitting here on the deco but the gold is just pristine very very strange looking on that end but i do love the boots and everything else he comes with especially his sword again the ivory scabbard with the golden trim and the sword itself looks just a little bit too pristine i wonder if it's a magical sword that's probably would explain a lot and why it's uh you know still the way it is and he comes with this very interesting circle. I don't know what that it's about. Uh, it just looks like you know, a, a, an ivory circle. Interesting. Again, I don't remember the episode enough to really <laughs> have any clear uh, memories of what that's all about. But he looks absolutely awesome. I can't wait until we get him to our collection. These guys are looking so great. And I'm so excited at the prospect of getting 7-inch Dungeons & Dragons figures. Finally, as I said earlier, the 4-inch and 5-inch figures were okay they were, they were, you know, they were neat, but I really am excited that Super 7 is getting a crack at doing these figures in proper 7-inch scale. Guys, this is amazing, and I can't wait to find out how they're going to handle this. As a matter of fact, looking closer, is it just me, or does Dekion's sword looks like it's actually vac metal? Oh my god, that would be cool. I guess we'll have to find out the official announcement from Super 7, because these are leaks. And I want to, once again, give a huge shout out to Toy Hunters Hollow for posting this announcement. Definitely give him a like and a follow on his Instagram page. A huge shout out to In Pursuit of Toys who found these in the first place. And of course, another huge shout out to my good friend Alejandro Valdez for sending me the link. Guys, toy news just keeps on coming in 2024. And we're now finding out that Dungeons & Dragons has a new home at Super 7. It's another roll of the dice, everybody. And this is one I think I'll definitely be putting some money down on. Wow, guys, this is just crazy. We're finally going to be getting ourselves 7-inch figures for the Dungeons & Dragons cartoon line. I'm not going to lie. I, I don't mind these guys terribly. There's things about them, obviously, like I said earlier. <laughs> no archer, no marksman holds their bow like that. That's just ridiculous. And as you can see here, his tunic, it literally rides up on him. You know what I mean? Like, they have cuts on the sides, but they just don't do what they need to do. And of course, this being plastic, once you leave them in this position for too long, yeah, it's 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 gonna stay in that way. So, you know, there are a lot of there are a lot of cons that go along with these particular figures here. I am very eager to find out what Super 7 can do with these figures and see exactly how they're gonna pull these off. Because so far, at least with the digital renders, they're looking pretty damn cool. I really appreciate the soft goods that are gonna be coming with Sheila. The idea that she can actually hold her hood together like this, that looks amazing. Now, there is something to be said about the idea that in the Hasbro version, the cloak actually has a translucency to it and it actually looks like she's disappearing. But the fact that she doesn't actually have a translucent version of herself sort of lends the idea that it was only a half measure. And honestly, these guys are, especially Bobby here and, and, and even Diana, they're just a bit too small. They're just a bit too small for my liking. I think a little bit bigger... Uh, would be better for stature and I'm really excited that Super 7 is getting a crack at this because we need much better representations of the Dungeons and Dragons characters as they appeared on the cartoon show. And this of course gives me hope that Tiamat will be coming to the line somehow. I imagine it might be or it might end up being some sort of uh, crowdsourced project. I mean when you think about 7 inch figures Tiamat is going to be huge. He's going to be absolutely massive. She, sorry, she is going to be massive. And honestly, I can't wait. Because Super 7, for anything else that they are able to do, they make some amazing monster figures. Slide looks incredible. So does Mongor. A lot of great opportunities for Super 7 to get in on there. Guys, this was an amazing look at a leak for Super 7's Dungeons & Dragons Ultimates characters. Let me know in the comment section below what are your thoughts of these new characters. Are you excited about a new Dungeons & Dragons line in the cartoon Ultimate style from Super 7? Are you going to be putting down pre-orders for this particular line knowing full well that Hasbro just fell shot short of the mark on these ones and there definitely needs to be a second kick at the can? Or are you kind of concerned, as I think many of us are, that the facial sculpts might not be up to standard and hopefully... 
they might improve as they have done well with certain characters in G.I. Joe. I mean, Duke looks amazing. So does the Baroness and Destro. But then looking at Lady J and Flint, it's an up and down situation depending on which factory they go with. So that is a major factor in its overall conclusion. Let me know those comments in the comment section below, guys. If you enjoyed this episode, please do leave me a like. It really does help me out. And if you're in the position to help the channel, please consider checking out my Patreon page. It's Mega J Retro on Patreon. Guys, the patrons and channel members of this channel help me make wonderful episodes every single week, and I couldn't do it without them. They are the best. Thank you so much for your support, everybody. It really means the world to me. I hope you're all doing well, staying safe. And as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. <laughs> Good journey, everybody. Geek proud.